In this video, I'm going to take you through an updated tutorial of the decentralized exchange Uniswap. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange which is also known as a DEX, where users can trade between any Ethereum based ERC20 token, which they can do using a Web3 wallet such as the likes of MetaMask. In 2020, Uniswap supported more than $56 billion of volume, meaning they were up 15,000% from $390 million in 2019, even surpassing Coinbase on weekly volumes in September 2020, and is now one of the largest places for crypto spot trading in the world. With Uniswap, there's no need to deposit or withdraw from the platform, and this is because they use liquidity pools instead of order books. There's also no sign-up or KYC required. Therefore, anyone, anywhere can quickly swap between ETH and any ERC20 token or earn 0.3% fees on all trades just by supplying liquidity to the platform. Uniswap also have their own UNI token, which can be used to represent voting shares in the Uniswap governance. The UNI token has recently soared in price with the likes of Datadash predicting a future coin value of $50. So let's take a look now so I can show you how to swap, add and remove liquidity. And at the end, I just want to talk through whether or not it's actually worth adding liquidity to these platforms at this moment in time. Please just be sure to watch the video all the way through, as it can be confusing if you jump around to certain sections, as I'm going to take you through a live example too. And for more information on Uniswap, please check out everybithelps.co.uk. So let's head across to uniswap.org now and just make sure that you're definitely entering in the correct address as there are a lot of fake sites around and maybe also consider saving it and adding the address as a favourite or a bookmark. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at the features available from within Uniswap. So we have Swap and Pull and I'll go into more details for these in a moment. Under UNI was a section that allowed you to perform liquidity mining. However, unfortunately, this has now ended. And at present, there's no announcement that that's going to be returning. Next is vote, where you can vote on governance proposals. Then finally, we have charts, where you can view trading volumes and liquidity, view some of the top tokens, as well as the most popular pairs. Plus, you could also toggle from dark to light mode from here and get access to their docs, Discord and analytics, etc. Let's jump in now and take a look at how we can swap. So instead of going to exchanges such as Binance or Coinbase, you can swap using Uniswap, where you don't have to send your funds to the exchange, as this is all done automatically for you when you connect up your wallet. Now, as I said, you don't send your funds over to an exchange. However, there are some gas transaction fees to pay with Uniswap. So to get started, you'll first need a token to swap, plus you're going to need some Ethereum to pay for the gas fees. And these are worth checking before you use sites like Uniswap, but more on that in a moment. And we're going to want to connect up our wallet at this stage. So if we click on to connect wallet in the top right hand side of the screen, you'll then have the option to connect up the likes of MetaMask, Wallet Connect and Coinbase Wallet. If you're not too sure how to use these, then I've got tutorials available. And I'm just going to connect up my MetaMask wallet now, which is actually connected to a hardware wallet. If you don't have a hardware wallet, I personally use Ledger and Trezor. Every now and again, they run promotions for these. So you could always check out my website, Everybit Helps, for the latest offers. And now that my wallet is connected, you'd also be able to see if you have any UNI balances from here too. And you can then select the token that you're swapping from. I'm just going to swap from ETH. Then from the second drop down, you'll see that there's a whole host of tokens available and you can also search for the tokens that you want. Also, if we head down to manage, Uniswap also have something called token lists. And what this allows you to do is select your token from a reputable list of ERC20 tokens. By using token lists, you can choose the list that you trust so that you can separate out fake or scam tokens. Another way to ensure that it's the correct token is to add in the specific contract address. So if I head across to CoinMarketCap, it'll provide me with that address here. 
Now, whilst I'm on CoinMarketCap, just a little tip for you. If you want to buy a token, but unsure which exchanges you can get these on, you can go across to the Markets tab here, and it will show you all the available exchanges. It will show you the price and the volume too. And as you can see for AMPL, Uniswap has the largest volume from the past 24 hours. So let's head back to Uniswap. And as I said, you can simply copy and paste that contract address into here. But the need for this has really decreased since they've added that token list feature, to be honest. So in this example, I'll say that I want to swap one ETH for Ampleforth. Then you'll see the estimated amount that you're going to receive. And this is because there can be some slippage, there's some fees to pay, and also some price impacts, which are due to the movement and the size of the liquidity pool. So underneath, it shows the minimum that you'll receive and the transaction will revert if there's a large unfavorable movement before it's confirmed. It'll show the price impact, which is the difference between the market price and the estimated price due to trade price. And it will show the liquidity provider fee, which is what goes to the liquidity providers, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. Plus, it'll also show you the route it'll take to swap your tokens if it's not a direct conversion. And what's interesting here is that you can also view the pair analytics. This gives you some stats, such as the total liquidity, volume in the last 24 hours, and a whole set of transactions too. And before we go to swap, we're just going to take a look at the settings, which you can reach by using the cog icon. And this allows me to modify my slippage tolerance for 0.1 to 0.5%. And there's a transaction deadline in here too, which will cancel the trade if it doesn't complete within a certain time frame. Now, just in terms of the price impact, if the markets are very volatile, you may want to increase the tolerance and the gas fee to make the transaction go through quicker. If not, the transaction could potentially fail and you're still going to be charged a gas fee anyway. So just try not to be too tight on gas fees or on the tolerance here, as you could end up having to pay twice anyway. Then to proceed with the swap, you'll need to pay two gas fees. First, to approve the interaction with your wallet if you've not swapped or allowed access previously, then to perform the actual swap. And I definitely recommend checking these prices before you swap. And if you can, try and find a time when the fees are lower so that you're not paying at the busiest times. So that's how you can swap. Next, let's take a look at Paul so we can earn those 0.3% fees that we just paid by providing liquidity on Uniswap. So if we click on to create a pair, and in this example, I'm going to input ETH and wrapped Bitcoin to add to the ETH WBTC pool. Then if you click on to max in the top half, it will then pre-populate the amounts for you. As you'll need to add an equal share of each token into here. You'll then see the prices in the pool share and the share of the pool that you'll have after supplying the pool. Again, in the same way as approving the interaction with your wallet in swaps, you're going to need to do the same thing for pools here before you can confirm your supply. And you'll need to pay ETH for these gas fees again. After the transaction is confirmed on the blockchain, you'll see the amount of ETH and WBTC liquidity provided and your pool share as a percentage. When you add liquidity, you receive pool tokens called Uniswap Liquidity Provider or LP tokens. These tokens essentially track your contribution to the pool and they earn fees proportional to your share of the pool and they can be redeemed at any time. In a previous Uniswap tutorial, you were able to stake LP tokens and earn rewards. However, as I stated earlier, that's no longer available at present, but hopefully that's going to return in the future. If it does, I'll make sure that I create an updated tutorial, so make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. So the liquidity that you provide is then used when someone makes a trade. In this example of ETH and wrapped Bitcoin on Uniswap. Therefore, it's worth mentioning that the ratio of your tokens might change over time, meaning that you could end up with more ETH or more WBTC, depending on which way people are trading. So once you've added liquidity, it will then show under your liquidity. Now, as a live example, I'm going to remove liquidity that I have on Uniswap, which is in the ETH AMPL pool. And I wouldn't normally do this with gas fees being so high right now, but I've been putting this video off for a while, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead. So if I head across to Manage, it will then show me all the details in relation to the liquidity that I've provided. So 
So let's go to remove liquidity. And I'm going to remove 100%. And the first thing I'll need to do is pay my first gas fee, just for interacting with my wallet. Which again, you can edit in conjunction with ETH gas station. Once that transaction is complete, you can see that it's end up costing $6.11. As per my example of adding liquidity to ETH, a wrap Bitcoin pool, you would then go ahead with the final step of removing the liquidity and paying your second gas fee as we haven't staked any LP tokens. However, in this live example, I've actually staked my LP tokens for this pool in the AMPL geyser, which I'm going to need to unstake and claim my rewards before I can remove the liquidity. And this process can also be performed on the likes of Zappa.fi and Zerion, which I have full tutorials for. With Zappa.fi, you can see that I have an asset here in the farm for ETH AMPL. And all Zappa.fi does is pull the information from your MetaMask and display it in an easy to use format. So from here, you can collect your rewards and unstake. Again, another similar platform to Zappa is Zerion, where you can see my state assets in Uniswap. But instead, I'm just going to head across to the geyser now to unstake. And I hope that I'm not confusing you here, as the geyser is just specific to staking AMPL. From here, I want to withdraw all my LP tokens. So if I hit max, I can then withdraw my LP tokens, and I'm also going to be claiming my AMPL rewards. So I'll click withdraw. Again, I'm going to need to pay a gas fee which is coming out at $63, which is pretty crazy. And again, these can be edited. And as you can see, it's now cost me $38 in the end, which is slightly better than the initial $63. So with that now complete, I can now remove my liquidity by heading back to Uniswap and selecting to remove. I'm going to be removing the max. And here it shows me that I'll receive 0.7 ETH and 690 AMPL back. So I'm just going to confirm that now. And the transaction is confirmed at $22. Now, like I said, I wouldn't normally do this at such high gas fees or recommend in doing so unless you really need to. Then to finish this off, I'm just going to swap my AMPL for ETH which then costs another $18 once it's all gone through. So after all these gas fees, is it worth adding liquidity right now? Well, let's take a look at an example that I just showed you. At the start of December 2020, I added this liquidity pair and I kept those tokens in Uniswap for about two months. So even with rewards and all of those gas fees I paid earlier, I would have been better off simply holding these tokens rather than adding liquidity. I do really like Uniswap and I think it's a great platform. I personally hold the UNI token in my portfolio, but at the moment gas fees are so high, sometimes it's cheaper just to send your tokens over to an exchange like Binance and do the exchange from there. Obviously, this isn't Uniswap's fault either. It's due to the growth of DeFi and the amount of transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. Obviously, this will be resolved at some point, but I'd highly recommend keeping a track of gas fees before making any transactions. So that concludes my Uniswap tutorial. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.